Lodge, and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. Really pleased to be joined now by Ricardo Melendez. He's the chief executive of the International Center for Trade and Sustainable Development. Now, tell me, trade, the pace of the growth of trade has slowed in recent years. Is that right? That's right, and that's a great concern. Because if you go back in history, it's been about 100 years since that has happened. It's only during the Great Depression and the wars that we had trade growing at a slower pace than output. Last year, trade grew at about 2%, while output grew at 3%. So that means really that in the international economy, in a globalized economy of today, we're losing opportunities for growth at a time when, as you know, because of the slow, slowdown in the Chinese economy, the mediocre growth in OECD economies and other factors, uh, we really all need much more growth. So I know that you're making some proposals this week in Davos at the World Economic Forum. Tell me a little bit about some of the specific measures that you think would help growth in trade. Okay, well that, that comes from an exercise that we have undertaken in the past three, four years. Uh, after years of working on international trade, investment, looking at the frameworks that really make the international economy function in the way that it does, we found out that those frameworks, that's the, to say the traffic lights uh, that the, the global economy really needs to function, are completely outdated. They go back to 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. They are full of uh, uh, all sorts of hindrances and obstacles to, uh, to really operate with the new changes in the growth of the economy and the organization of production uh, on international value chains, on global value chains, on technology, the digital economy, even in agricultural trade. Uh, so we invited about 400 experts and we asked them to work on proposals that would really bring those frameworks, the trade agreements, the investing agreements, into uh, sort of what would be fit for purpose mm -hmm. with the new economy. That's what we would be launching here on Friday. In Davos. Tell me one of the things that you think would be the easiest to change, for example. Well, there, there are a number of fixes that are not that complicated. Mm -hmm. They just need a few governments to come together and decide that they want to do it. For instance, in the digital economy, there are fantastic opportunities for SMEs. Now that we're talking about inequality, we know that those technologies can be incredibly helpful in uh, trying to overcome inequality through global markets but we are full of, uh, of laws at the domestic level that impede that growth. It's the same thing with respect, say, to investment. We have almost 4,000 investment agreements between countries, mm -hmm. uh, which make it very difficult for investors to really understand uh, wh under what terms and conditions they're going into any country to do their productive investment. So we need to iron all that out. Those are some examples, but there are many, including, for instance, in December, the World Trade Organization uh, fell short of coming up with agreements that were very much expected on, on agricultural markets. Um, there are many ways in which this could be fixed, again, uh, and we're making some of those proposals. Ricardo, thank you so much for stopping by Hub Culture's Pavilion here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush.